All right, guys, what's going on? So today we're continuing with our quantum field theory playlist, and this time we're going to be going over important contractions. So we're going to get into the material really quick. These important, these important contractions are mentioned in the book. Uh, again, that book being this one right here, No Nonsense Quantum Field Theory. We're really getting to, uh, I would say, the last 100 pages or so of this book, and it's exciting. Um, uh, but anyways, these important contractions are going to help us in performing Feynman calculations later on. So it's best to get the uh, be, uh, understand these, uh, get through them, and then we'll start doing some ac actual calculations, introducing the Feynman diagrams a little bit uh, more in depth. And uh, basically, these contractions are going to um, they're going to be very very useful. So let's get uh, before we get get right into the uh, the topic. Um, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. Now let's get into it. So we're talking about important contractions. So the first contraction we're going to do, so we talked about contractions earlier. We talked about what exactly they were uh, in terms of Wick's theorem. Um, and they're basically the difference between the time order and the normal order product. That's what we found. That's what we would, that, that was Wick's theorem, okay? And... What we want to do is we want to be able to contract fields with different operators. We want to be able to contract fields with, um, you know, I'll show right here. So we're going to show where we have fields with operators. We have uh, fields with uh, states. We have uh, operators with operators. We're going to contract these guys and we're going to see how all of this is going to work out. Uh, again, an operator with an operator. Uh, states with states and um, operators again. So the, all of these are going to be, this is just going to be sort of a deep dive calculation into understanding exactly where these come from because I don't want to be one of those people or one of those professors or teachers who says, you know, just take this at face value. So let's go ahead and get right into this. So this, we're starting off, we're, we're going to start off with contracting a field with an operator again. Remember that the field is a function of space-time. The operator is a function of the form momentum. So these things are different functions of, of different variables. So when we, so a contraction again, if we take Wick's theorem, it's the difference between the time order and the normal order product. The normal order product is going to go to zero, right? When we sandwich between a uh, bra and a ket vector that are the same, okay? So essentially, a contraction is the same thing as just a time-ordered uh, series of our, of our field and our operator. Okay, and so if we could take this t out, right, th that's not going to do anything. So when we take so this so this right here is going to be so here's our, so our field is this right here and our operator is right here. When we multiply everything out right so i'm going to multiply our creation by our annihilation that gives us creation annihilation right here here's our exponential just comes out of the uh, the bracket notation and the same thing uh, right here okay from that we can see that this guy is going to go to zero right because um, what we're seeing here is that uh, we, we're, trying, we're going from zero to zero, so we can't have two creation operators between those. So this, this is sort of somewhat of a violation, and so this term is essentially going to go to zero uh, because, again, we can't, this just, this just can't, this, this isn't a, really a thing, okay? And so what, we, what we're left with is this, right here and to get from here to here well we realize that this is uh, we have no dagger and a dagger dagger no dagger so that's these two things are the commutation relationship so if we add the commutation relationship to this guy we'll get this and you can prove that for yourself I think we've done that before in a previous video and so that's how we get from this step 
to this step. This is just an algebraic manipulation of operators. Uh, when we consider that operators are things that we could take commutation relationships of. So then what we see here, if we were to separate this out, right? So we get, we annihilate, I can draw here. So we're taking both of these guys and sort of separating out um, the terms. And the ter this term right here is going to go to zero, right? Because we're annihilating something that's, there, there, there's no particles in that state. So that's gonna take us to the zero vector, zero times anything is zero. That's gonna, so this term's gonna go to zero. This term here, we've established before, for um, our scalar fields, which looks like this, okay? This delta function then is going to take all of our Qs, all of our Qs and make them equal to K so that this is equal to one. Right? So everywhere we see a Q, we just replace with K. And so what we get is this guy here and this guy here I can show is gonna cancel. So that th this is what we get, and we can do the similar. We can do a very similar procedure to get this relationship right here. So we have uh, a relationship where we take the field and we contract it with the come with with the uh, uh, creation operator, and we take an annihilation operator and contract it with the field, and these are the two relationships uh, we get. Okay, so far so good. If we now take our field and contract it with a state, a particle, a, a particle with momentum k, right, so what's that gonna do? This is our normalized, this is something we've established before also, this is a normalized version of uh, one, the, this particle in this momentum state. So when we get this, well this is just gonna be a number so this we can bring out, uh, this is just going to be a number, this thing we can essentially ignore. This field contracted with this operator, well, we, we've seen that to be um, with this guy right here, right? And we, we're, the integral, again, is going to cancel out uh, with this guy right here, right? So these two guys are going to cancel. Two guys are going to cancel like that, and what we're left with is a contraction on uh, again this guy with this guy right here, which is just going to give us this because this is what we've established before. Okay, and then we have this zero particle state, right? So a a field contracted with a particle state in momentum k is just going to give us uh, this wave multiplied by the this zero particle state. Okay. Similarly, we can find out that this this bra vector uh, when it commute when you commute or when we contract it with the field again, we get uh, zero particles, uh, a zero particle state zero particle state multiplied by this factor here, right? So, so, so we've established these four contractions. Now let's, let's keep on going. The next thing we want to contract is a, a this guy here, right? So this guy is an anni annihilation operator with momentum Q and a creation app with, with momentum k, okay? Essentially here, we're contracting two, uh, we're contracting an annihilation moment, momentum operators, or annihilation and creation operators, but at different uh, values of momentum. So let's see how this works out. So again, we say the contraction is equal to the time ordering because um, the normal ordering goes to zero when we sandwich between two states, okay? But if you want to, what I can do just to make this clear is that 
Oh, no, not. Just to make this complete, this is what we have going on. And essentially what we're saying is that this guy's going to zero because it's we've established that the normal order uh, the, the normal order product when sandwiched between two states that are similar goes to zero. Okay, so maybe that'll help if you can see that in action. Now, so that takes us to this point again because this is just uh, this t can drop out, and what we have now is we do the same commutation trick, right? Which leads us to this. And so, again, this is an annihilation operator. So that's going to take the, when we distribute, when we distribute like this, the first term is going to go to zero because we're annihilating a particle in the zero, in the zero state. And then we're left with a commutation relationship. This, the commutation relationship, again, we've established looks like this. And so we can, we get something now that looks like this. So the contraction uh, of two operators at two different momentum states looks like this. So I would say that, I would say that this is number five our fifth important contraction. This guy right here is gonna be our sixth important contraction. And this guy down here is gonna be our seventh important contraction. Let's go over these, uh, five, this uh, six and seven now. So six, we're contracting a bra, ve a bra vector with a ket vector. All right, so we take our, our normalized, uh, our normalized, um, uh, numbers out, right? So these take into account the temporal part of the momentum, four vectors, right? And that turns into a contraction here, because if we're contracting here, we have to contract here. Well, what we do now is now we're, now we're contracting two operators, similar to what we did up here, we're contracting two operators. Um, and one of these has to be at the k. This has to be in K with the K momentum. And so that takes us to this step right here uh, because we've established this relationship up here. And now we're left with um, the contraction of a bra vector with a cat vector. And that gives us this. Okay, so these these are very similar to each other, right? We have this delta function, have this delta function. We just have different uh, normalized uh, numbers out here, um, and these normalization numbers they're not terribly important for the calculations we're going to do later, but uh, they are important for when when you make measurements and so forth. So the last contraction we want to do is a contraction of two operators, both of which are the same. Uh, this is annihilation and annihilation, right? And so instead of annihilation and contraction, but the, there are different momentum states. So we get this and we have this now, right? And how we get from here, uh, this should actually be, okay. So we get from here to here relatively easily. We just have, we, it's basically the same thing. And uh, this here is, is zero, right? Because the, this uh, annihilation acting on the zero vector or zero ket vector takes us to a zero vector and, or takes us to zero. And zero times anything is zero, so we get this important contraction. And you can imagine that we could do a contraction between 
these two guys as well. And that's going to take, take us to zero also, right? Because we're going to get daggers right here. But since we have zeros on both sides, there's no way we can add to zero and then add again to get back to zero. So this has to be zero. So I'll say that this is contraction number eight. So that's the, the, that's going to be it for this video. Really what I wanted to do in this video is talk about some important contractions so that we can sort of not really get them out of the way, but sort of get them out of the way so that we can um, proceed with doing more interesting calculations involving Feynman diagrams and uh, things of that nature. So if you like this kind of content, again, please hit that like and subscribe button, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.